everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. We left off in the video before this one with an alcohol ink painting of a fantasy geode. I made the painting on an acid-free archival hardboard artist panel by Ampersand. This particular panel is one of various types they offer for many mediums. And I have to say, I loved working on it. There was no prep work to do, like the typical sealing I'd have to do if I was using MDF. It's already done when you purchase these panels. The panel is very rigid and light, and painting on it was super easy. The one caveat is one we're used to when working with alcohol ink. The panel will stain, so plan accordingly. Okay, let's embellish this geode. We'll give it some bling and a whole lot of sparkle. To that end, I've pulled out various glitters, some crystals, both acrylic and glass. And in the glitter assortment, I know I want to use my favorite glitter, which is Elizabeth Craft Designs Microfine Glitter. This has a beautiful, elegant look I always love to use. And I want to try this fun mermaid glitter a really kind viewer sent me. Thank you so much, Joan N. I'm excited to play with these. Now, when I glue things that I know will be exposed, in other words, not under resin, I prefer to use five minute epoxy rather than like a glue. Well, I mean, epoxy is a glue, but I mean like, you know, Elmer's glue or, or a tube glue, because the epoxy is strong and it cures quickly. I don't have to worry about accidentally shifting things when I move on to later stages of the project. I'm finishing up the little that's left in this syringe style, but later you'll see that I use it for more economical bottles instead. I mixed up some of the epoxy to attach some crystals to the center of the geode. I used both larger acrylic crystals and tiny glass ones too. Once those were down, I surrounded them with more epoxy and then took out one of the chunkier mermaid glitters. I used that glitter to fill in any spots between the crystals and to also make up the border around the crystals. I am already loving the effect and the dimensional look of this. Next, I add some really tiny glass crystals to three spots on the periphery of the geode, just for added interest. My plan is to have these stay exposed as well. I bordered those crystals with a couple colors of the finer mermaid glitter. I used the lavender and a pink. I really like these glitters. These are very, very pretty. My next thought was to add more interest to the center area, so I bordered it with a really blingy glitter <laughs> that I couldn't resist a while back while shopping at Michael's. It was one of those, I saw it, I fell in love, I had to have it, even though that is not why I went to Michael's that day. <laughs> It was just perfect for this. How delicious is this blingage? Oh my gosh, look at this. It's so sparkly. Oh, I love it. <laughs> the next step was to add some dimensional lines of glitter. Here you see me adding pink glitter to a line of epoxy I'd laid down. Now that my syringe is empty, I switch over to those bottles of similar epoxy I mentioned earlier. Now you can use regular glue for this step, but the reason I like epoxy for this too 
is that I can spread it, let it start to cure, and then sprinkle glitter on it. By doing it that way, I don't have to worry about you know, the oozy mess that can happen with glue if you press down on the glitter after you've sprinkled it onto the, the line of glue. I can also brush away excess glitter immediately and I can be pretty aggressive about it too. The epoxy will not move at this point. After finishing up with the pink, I add some lavender glitter to the edge of the geode. Then I get a possibly nutty idea. <laughs> I admit it's kind of nutty. I thought that since I'd already done this type of painted edge before in a previous video, I should try something different. So I decide to use sand to create a dimensional border for the geode. And I also decide to make it high enough that it can be a dam for the resin. My plan now is to not cover the entire panel with resin just the geode. I'll leave the white negative space as is, and maybe at some point down the line I may even put in a background. But that part isn't decided yet, and for this video I'm going to leave it white. I build my dam with the epoxy and sand, and sculpt it with a little height. Not too much, just enough to hold back the resin. And then after doing that, I sprinkle extra sand on top of that to make it look more rough and not so shiny. Like the exterior of a geode. Okay, should we stop here? <laughs> um... <laughs> Have we met? <laughs> no? <laughs> okay. Hi, my name is Miriam, <laughs> and I'm a glitterholic. <laughs> so, um, no, we are not stopping here. <laughs> so with the dam done, <laughs> I cleaned up any loose glitter and sand to prepare for my next round of sparkly stuff. <laughs> For this part of the project, I'm using adhesive size from Speedball. I put some in a little dispenser bottle just for convenience. This adhesive is actually meant for metal leaf, like gold or silver leaf. And you usually apply the thinnest coat possible when you use it for that. But I found that if I put down a thicker coat, I can use it for microfine glitter. So that's what you see me doing. When this stuff dries, it's flat and very sticky for up to two days. I get a much nicer application of the glitter this way than, say, using something like Elmer's glue, which would dry before I could spread it all out, and I'd never get it to be perfectly even. So I love using this adhesive instead. I'm planning on using two different glitters, one over the lavender areas of the alcohol ink and another one over some of the pinky peachy area. As meticulously <laughs> as possible, I spread a generous coat exactly where I want the glitter to go. Here you can see how much I put down. It's a good thick layer. And now, after waiting about half an hour, it's all dry and ready for me to have fun. <laughs> Over the lavender areas, I'm using the cool diamond glitter from Elizabeth Craft. It has an iridescent quality that will flash lavender, green, and blue. So it's going to be really good for this. I use a fluffy brush to sort of paint on the glitter and I use my finger to burnish it in. I don't want to just dump the glitter this time because I don't want it to get on the pink areas that's going to get a different glitter. 
While I do that, click on the subscribe button and make sure to hit the bell afterwards so that you'll be notified when I post a new alcohol ink, resin, or mixed media project. With the cool diamond done, I pull out another transparent glitter. This is crystal clear, so it has no color. I love it for a little extra sparkle that's subtle and doesn't obscure anything beneath it. I ran just a thin line of it since I already had the pink glitter too, so I don't want a lot more glitter now. I mean, even I know when enough is enough. <laughs> Once that's all down and burnished, we are ready for resin. I'm using Stone Coat's Quick Coat. Since I'm just doing a fairly simple top coat and I don't really need a lot of work time. It'll give me about 12 to 15 minutes of work time, but it'll cure to the touch in three hours. I use my electrical tape to protect the back of the panel from possible drips. And I'm gonna use a technique I learned from Smart Art Materials channel. She showed using a tape dam that's tiny in height to prevent having a lip around your piece when the tape comes off. Ideally, I should dome the resin, but I think I'll avoid going that high with the resin for this piece because I don't want to risk covering too much of the sand or the crystals. So I pour the resin, I coax it to the edge, to the sand border, and up against all the crystals. When I'm happy with the placement of the resin, I torch it for bubbles, and protect this under cover for a couple of hours. Four hours later, I am safe to pull off the tape. Yeah, it really worked. I mean, I have a teeny tiny itty bitty lip, but it's so minuscule that I could live with this. So this technique of smart art materials is really a good one. I will definitely use this again in the future. Now, how fabulous is this? There is so much sparkly goodness here. I love how it turned out. I am rather happy with the sand edge. I may use a teeny bit of acrylic paint or maybe thin down alcohol ink to give it a more mottled look. I don't know. What do you think? Should I just leave it this way or give it like little little specks of color here and there? What would you do also to the negative space? Would you just leave it white or would you paint in a background or, I don't know, maybe collage in a background? I don't know. There are a lot of possibilities. Share your thoughts in the comments below. I would love to read them. I had so much fun making this and I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you'd like more alcohol ink and resin projects. And also let me know in the comments what else you'd like to see. Thank you all for checking the description box for ways to keep the channel going. Make sure to let your creative nature shine this week. See you soon. Bye now.